Good morning, Hope Savara here. Today is focusing on shoulders. And so the shoulder is one of the most dynamic joints in the body. It's also the number one injured joint in the body. So we have the rotator cuff inserting a long circular all around the shoulder socket. We have the pectoral feeding in. We also have the deltoid, the bicep, the tricep, and also the traps, all kind of feeding in and supporting the shoulder. Now when the shoulder's balanced properly, it definitely is a joint to be reckoned with. It's super stable, highly mobile, and so there's a lot that can be done with it. But for many of us, we're doing one of two things. Either we're not doing anything with it, and it's becoming very stiff and immobile, or too much strength training, or where it's overly mobile or hypermobile, and it doesn't have the right balance of stretch and strength in combination. So a couple of the movements that we're going to do today is really focused on shoulder health. Whether you're recovering from an injury, now several of my students have had rotator cuff surgery either recently or 20 years ago, and they have limited range of motion. Um, golfers, this is going to be a great stretch for and a great strengthening for to really open up the dynamics of the shoulder. Also, if you're just a yogi and you just want to be able to open and work the shoulders, um, balance off your weight training that maybe you're doing with external hand weights or barbells, whatever it is that you're using. So really take into note this movement and notice the amount of limitation or mobility that you have. This is going to be a great movement for seniors. Our chair yoga people work with this quite a bit. We're going to do the same movement with and without a hand weight, so you can notice the difference in how just a little bit of weight, don't be overly ambitious, I'm going to use three pounds, really makes a big difference. Especially if you're nursing an injury, work slowly. All right, let's begin. I'm going to stand up against a free wall. And so just make sure that you have enough space for your body to stand up against it and your arms to be out like a cactus. So now when we're standing up against the wall, just a quick side note, I do not want you to have your heels up against the wall. You have a booty, okay? And, and it protrudes out farther than your heels do. So you need to make room for that and accommodate that. So my heels are maybe an inch or so, depending on my body size, away from the wall. Secondly, I'm gonna be in what's called neutral pelvis. So that means that pubis bone and hip bones are running parallel towards me on your mirror, okay? That will bring the natural curve of your spine into play. So from a side profile, I have a little bit bigger lordotic curve, so I can get my whole forearm up behind my spine. For you, maybe it's only your fingertips or maybe only your pinky finger, but you need to have that natural curve in play. For many of the exercises people are still doing today, they're flattening the spine. Now, unless you have an extreme case, I worked with a lady that broke her pelvis, so we did work with some imprint into the floor, you're basically undoing everything your spine is designed to do. Be with that natural curve. So that's where we want to be with the torso and the spine. Secondly, I want you to take note of the rib cage. When the shoulder girdle, one or both sides of the shoulder girdle, are frozen or stuck, the rib cage will exaggerate the movement for the shoulder. Meaning, when I lift my arm up, okay, just my arm lifted, not my rib cage. Now, for those of us that are restricted here and we want to lift the arm, the rib cage is actually what's moving. The arm really isn't. So it's an illusion that we are able to extend our arm up when in reality it's just our rib cage pressing forward and dropping down. So paying attention to those small little things. Finally, the shoulders are going to work themselves open. For a majority of people, myself included, we tend to have some kyphosis. Some cases more extreme than the other. What is kyphosis? Kyphosis is where the shoulders round forward, okay, and really hunch and collapse the chest. Emotionally, this can definitely have an impact on us for depression and anxiety. The heart is kind of compacted. We're not able to take a full breath. But also, just feeling strain in the neck. The head tends to protrude forward. How would I develop these type of issues? Driving a car for more than 20 minutes at a time. You sit at a desk for more than an hour or even 30 minutes. Most of us are doing six to eight hours because we may not even work at a computer, but then our leisurely activities require us or involve reading a book, gardening, sitting at the computer, watching TV, which tend to put us into this curl position. So really take note of your posture. All right, we're getting there. So now again, my shoulders are trying to open, remember the rib cage, without letting the rib cage protrude. Just because I can do one thing, I have to watch also the reaction of another thing or another body part. 
So I'm using core stability or core contraction here to keep my rib cage in place and only work with my shoulder and my scapula. So typically shoulder issue is also scapula issue. That's a whole other story, but we're really just focusing on the movement today. You will benefit both scapular and shoulder girdle. All right, body comes upright. Let's first take note, neck is in neutral. Yes, check mark. Arms are gonna come open like an airplane. So first let's note, can my arms even press up against the wall? Maybe it's just your hands, maybe it's just your elbows. Now, about 15 years ago, I fractured my right elbow, so it doesn't fully straighten, so it does give me a little bit of a funky right arm. So if you start to notice something funny going on, it's just my arm doesn't quite move on this side, exactly symmetrical to my left arm. All right. Noticing the wrists as well, we typically, the mind does not want to disappoint, so we'll flex the wrist to touch the wall, but in reality, we have three to five inch gap between our wrists and the wall. So let's just try to stand here, nice strong legs, not locked but active, pelvic core is engaged, neutral spine, relaxed rib cage. Let's hold and breathe here, inhale through the nose, and exhale, breathe. Your shoulders should try to touch the wall, or scapula upper back should try to touch the wall. Inhale through the nose, and exhale. If you're used to more of a kyphotic nature, the neck may feel uncomfortable, okay? Inhale. And exhale. My elbows look okay? They look good. Inhale. Body is strong. Exhale. Here I'm just kind of waiting for this to be over. Here I'm nice and active and alert. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Breathe out. Relax your shoulder blades. Keep breathing. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. It's amazing what will rise your body temperature. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, last breath, inhale, and exhale, slowly slide the arms down, roll the shoulders. So if you're feeling like your arms weigh about 10 more pounds than normal, you're doing great. Okay, so now let's work with the internal external rotation. If you've ever done anything to your shoulder or rotator cuff, either with a physical therapist, a massage therapist, or an educated instructor or personal trainer, they're going to notice and challenge the capacity of your rotation. Or maybe they've tucked your arm behind your back, a massage therapist, and then worked on the stroller and scapula. So just paying attention to this range of motion. Healthy for just all adults, active and working physically hard or not, this range of motion is essential as we age. Because as we age, what do we do? We move less. And so we really want to make sure we have this openness in a very mobile area of the shoulder joint. All right, here we go again. I'm gonna alternate, okay? So that way you can just focus on one arm at a time. Inhale, turning down. Notice how I'm keeping my right elbow, your left elbow, down against the wall. Shoulder, same thing. So as I rotate my fingertips down, my right shoulder wants to pop up off the wall. So I'm gonna try to keep that shoulder back. I'm only gonna go as far as I can. And then rotating that arm back up. And then again, rotating down. Notice how my shoulder rotates away, and then slowly coming up. I'm not perfect. Rotating down, breathe, and then inhale, rotating back up. Exhale, and inhale. Keep breathing, body is strong. Exhale, notice what the rib cage is doing. Rotating down, and rotating back up. Keep breathing, exhale, rotating down. And inhale, rotating back up. Each time it gets easier, so don't force it. Exhale, rotating down. You're only doing what your body is capable of. So again, noticing my shoulder rotation is not perfect. So I'm still rotating off the wall. And then slowly coming up, but I'm very conscious of not forcing. Exhale, rotating down. Trying to keep that shoulder back. And inhale, rotating back up. Notice how I'm not trying to touch the fingertips to the wall, because my body won't let me go there. That's about as far as I can go. And back up, let's do one more. Exhale, rotating down. And inhale, rotating back up. Exhale, lower the arms down. So a good goal is to work to 10 rotations on each side. We did about six. Okay, next movement is gonna be a slide up and down. So now, it's almost like I'm laying on the floor. You could essentially do this on the floor if you feel like it's more appropriate. Maybe standing right now, maybe you recently had an injury, it's just not working for you. So listen to your body, there's always options. Back into this cactus position. Rib cage, relax this down, 
core is strong. This part of the body is going to allow this part of the body to move more freely. Okay? Everything is an extension from the core, even a movement like this. Okay, here we go. Inhale, sliding up. I'm trying to keep my elbows and tops of my forearms back. I really feel a good challenge in my deltoids, the tops of the shoulders, and through my underarm cavity. Exhale, sliding down. Awareness, where is the level of my shoulder? It's not here, it's here. Inhale, coming up. Now, if I'm more restricted, I'm gonna protrude my rib cage. Oh, I did it! Really, you did it. Remember, you moved here. You didn't really move here. So relaxing the rib cage down. There's that core component again. Let's slide back up. Inhale up. Breathe into your side body it's about as far as I can go. And then exhale, slowly lowering down. Nice. Inhale. Keep breathing. Exhale. What might happen for those of us trying to push farther than we can? That fingertips might come up off the wall. But more commonly, it's the elbow and the forearm. So this kind of happens so that we can try to keep the hands back, and we're so focused on getting the hands vertical that we've forgotten really essentially what the focus is, the shoulder joint. So don't worry about how high you go. It's really about the quality of movement, and that one's true for everything that we do. Let's try at least three more. So inhale up, nice job. Exhale down, nice. Inhale up, and exhale down. You're doing great. Last one, inhale up, and exhale down, and release. Nice job, roll the shoulders up. So my first time working with this movement was with a 62-year-old woman who was diagnosed with um, type 2 multiple sclerosis. She walked with a cane, had some severe kyphosis going on. So this was one of the first movements we started working with, and eventually we added weights. And the last time I worked with her and I just relocated studios, um, she was walking upright no longer needed a cane. So this stuff really does work. And again, slow and steady. I would suggest using anywhere between a one and a three pound hand weight. Um, I've been working with this movement for a long time. This is one of my regular practice movements. So three pounds may be too much for you. If you don't have hand weights, Water bottles work great, soup cans work great. Um, again, you don't even need the weight. It's just when you're ready to go to that next step. Okay, so back to cactus. I'm gonna hold the weights with my fingertips extended. When we grip a weight, we lose a lot of energy we should be using for the movement. Rescan your body. Feet are parallel, neutral pelvis, rib cage is relaxed down. Arms are up like a cactus. Internal, external rotation. I'm sorry, not internal. Um, rotation here from the shoulder. So dropping down. Watch the shoulder. And then slowly coming back up. Now we're going to use the weights. It's not necessary for you to use the weights, especially if you're still working with just a quality arm rotation, shoulder rotation. But if you're ready to take that next step, I would recommend one to three pounds. If you're new to this movement, start slowly and increment up. If you don't have hand weights at home, water bottles and soup cans work great. Let's begin. Realign neutral, so pelvic neutral, strong core, strong pelvic core, rib cage is relaxed, arms open up like an airplane or cactus. Fingertips towards the ceiling. Remember, it's from the shoulder. So exhale, rotate down. I'm going to do right arm. Only as far as I can go. Inhale, slowly rotate back up. Let's alternate. Exhale, rotate down. That little bit of weight makes a big difference. Inhale, come back up. I'm still noticing, though, my core stabilizing me. Even though we feel, okay, the focus is the shoulder, remember, everything is always an extension of the core. Notice that slight core work. Exhale. When I mean slight, it's subtle, but it's strong. And back up. Keep the shoulder towards the wall. Exhale, rotate down. Keep breathing. And inhale, rotate back up. Nice. Exhale, breathe out. Inhale. Nice. Exhale, breathe out. Nice challenge for the low back as well, that latissimus dorsi muscle actually attaches inserts on the inside of the humerus bone. So a really good challenge to keep neutral and keep the rib cage from popping as I work with this rotation. Let's do one more each way. Just like the first movement, a good starting point, five to eight reps. Five might even be too many, working up to ten. Exhale, rotating down, and inhale, rotating back up. And let's go right into the slide. Inhale, slide up. 
and exhale, slide back. Keep the elbows back. Inhale, slide up. With the weights, it's about as far as I can go. And exhale, slide down. Pelvic core is strong. Inhale, this is three. And exhale, slide down. Keep breathing. Inhale, this is four. And exhale, strong body. Neck long. Inhale, this is five. Let's try to go to seven. And exhale down. Inhale, six. Stop when you need to. It's not about how many movements, but the quality of movement. And inhale, lift. And exhale down. Drop the arms. Roll the shoulders. Nice work. This movement is great to incorporate into your yoga classes if you're a yoga teacher and really change things up. This is a great prep to any sort of shoulder work that you're going to be doing later on in the class to really help create openness and better posture. For more information, visit my website at hopesavara.com. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Core Functional Fitness by Hope Savara. Um, every day I post tips and videos and how-tos so that you can continue your practice on and off the mat. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, take one step forward into a great day ahead. Namaste.